inventory, a lot of options within inventory. Just know that we'll work with you to configure what you need. So out of the box, this is just some base configuration. Um, if you've got a more complex implementation, again, we can we can enable those features. If you um, if you want to enable them later, you can do that. If you don't need them, that's fine too. Okay. So let me just look at uh, an inventory item. Let's look at a bicycle here. All right. Uh, inventory item. Um, this is oftentimes where we make use of multiple number series as well as templates. So aid in the setup and inventory item. Uh, you can use a manufacturer part number if you want. We've got all the cross references if you need them, et cetera, to the item. Lots of different descriptions. So long descriptions, short descriptions. We can do descriptions that just show up on purchase documents, sales documents, et cetera. We do have the ability to do three different types of inventory. So an inventory item, service, and non-inventory. This is different than resources. So uh, some of my clients have set up non-inventory items or or service type items as inventory items. Other ones have set up, uh, let's say, uh, service type things as resources. So really that's just something you can determine during the implementation, but offers you some additional flexibility. If you want inventory to be just true inventory items, don't need to use this, but you can. So service and non-inventory items. Uh, full unit of measure conversion, so you can set up whatever you want. Base unit of measure, selling unit of measure, uh, purchase unit of measure, full unit of measure conversions back and forth to base. So I can go to cases and pallets and whatever I'd want to do. Item category codes just allow me to do some reporting. Item service code would be my direction to uh, service items. So uh, the system can automatically create a service item over in the service modules if I needed to, uh, based on the inventory items. So the point of sale automatically create the service, essentially the service contract for the item. Visibility to inventory transactions off of the item. So in this case, production orders. If I've got 20 of them on a production order, I can click on it. I can see it's a firm plan order. I can show the document. So link backs uh, to the transactions on the inventory item, including components. So I show the quantity on assembly order. There's also uh, quantity on components that deals with a production order. So I can see both um, from a finished goods perspective what's there, but I could also see demand if it's a component item. We do stock out warnings, prevent negative inventory. You can override those. Some people like negative inventory, some people don't. So uh, we can accommodate both if you need to do that. We do track uh, weight, gross volume. Um, this can be used in the uh, shipping integration. So in terms of you know package weight, et cetera, that can roll up based on the items. Um, this can also be used to do the uh, directed putaways. So I can say that a particular uh, bin location is limit based on volume or weight. Um, that's where that volume or weight is going to be driven from. We do support FIFO, LIFO, standard average for costing methods. Specific cost is going to be uh, the ability to tie a specific cost to a lot or serial tracked item. So these fields will be enabled where appropriate, posting ties to my GL account, uh, uh, taxability of an item, and the, and the uh, based on the jurisdiction is gonna be used based on this tax group code. So type of item based on the jurisdiction would tell me the taxability as well as the rate potentially of the, of the tax schedule. Deferral, I talked about the ability to set up a default deferral schedule based on the inventory item. Maybe it's a maintenance item. We do some tracking with some um, country of origin tariff information if you need that. Pricing, um, we do have the ability to set special prices. So pricing can be done based on, uh, obviously I have a default price, but customer price group, all customers based on a campaign if I want to. And then I can do discounts to mark up, mark down, et cetera, based on pricing. Same functionality on the purchase side. So if I go under here, the action special, um, um, oops, they did, sorry, special purchase prices and discounts, same concept on the on the vendor side. If I'm going to do vendor specific pricing, um, if I want to do a price sheet, et cetera, I can do that. Uh, from a replenishment perspective, I can buy an item, I can make an item, that would be a production order. I could transfer it from another location if I've got multiple locations. And assembly is that kit functionality. So depending on how I want to uh, uh, create or get that item, that's my replenishment. I can track default vendors, I can track multiple vendors on an item. Uh, based on the production or assembly, I can determine you know, its routing, its production orders, make to order, make the stock, all that different type of calculation. You notice that planning is separate then from that. So based on the item, I can also determine the planning method. One of these planning methods is blank. And I just like to point that out. So I can exclude items from the planning process, um, but in the same way, I can also determine what items I'm gonna plan for. So if you've never done um, planning on an automated way, you can sort of prototype this with a subset of items, one item if you want to. Um, planning also doesn't always make sense for everything. Right? There's, there's just cases where I don't need to plan for some items. So I can exclude those from the planning process. So not an all or nothing um, 
uh, proposition here. They have the ability to do that. These different planning methods then just depend on the type of item it is. So I'd direct you to the help on this. There's some recommendation in terms of you know, uh, low volume, high dollar, high, uh, low dollar, high volume, just different combinations of that. But know that those uh, those options exist. I talked a little bit about reservations. So I have the ability to always reserve optional or never. So I can determine when do I want to do that. And I do have some order tracking capabilities in the system as well to connect supply and demand together. Uh, order tracking, I can do lot numbers, serial numbers, as well as expiration dates. I can also do a combination of that. Little unique feature here in terms of how this um, lot number and serial number can be configured. I'm going to go in here to edit. I have the ability to determine when and what type of transaction do I want to track a serial number or a lot number. So this is not an all or nothing uh, proposition here. So I've worked with some clients that only want to track at the point of shipment. So I just want to validate that, um, you know, that maybe the item I'm getting back or the item I'm servicing is actually something I sold. So what I can do is I can actually just say, well, I only want to track the serial number at the point of sale. So when I'm shipping or when I'm uh, invoicing the customer, that's when I have to capture a serial number. Any other time I don't care about it. I don't care about it in warehouse operations. I don't need to scan 400 of uh, serial numbers numbers at the point of receipt, for example. Worked with a client that sold um, um, uh, notebooks or, or uh, tablet devices to schools. So, you know, they were shipping hundreds of these things out. Well, they only wanted to track it at the point of sale because they didn't need to bog down the rest of their operations using that. Now, we work with medical device companies as well. You want to track it from the beginning to the end, not a problem. Uh, we actually can, um, on an inbound transaction, the lot number must exist. So we can actually get uh, a series of lot numbers or serial numbers. Serial number is the same way, serial number must exist. And this example would be uh, the vendor sends us a list of serial numbers that we're supposed to be receiving. I can get those into the system. And then when I process the receipt, I'm actually validating the serial number I'm capturing against the list that the vendor's already provided to me. So we can really lock this thing down or it can be very open, depending on what you need for serial lot numbers. Um, down here, we do track a warranty, um, require an expiration date if we need to. Um, strict expiration posting would allow us then to um, uh, pick and sell the oldest item first. Okay, so we can track some of that stuff down primarily with, um, well, a lot of different companies need that. Warehousing, um, this is where I would look at and configure my, um, well, cycle counting would be the first thing. So I can do the cycle counting here. But then if I have any um, specific handling functionality or requirements around warehousing, so special equipment, do I need a forklift, do I need two people? Uh, does this have to go in a refrigerated space? Does this have to go in a refreezer? Um, you know, do I need it uh, away from other hazmat? You know, I need it, it's a, it's a, maybe it's a corrosive chemical, can't be by batteries, whatever it might be. All those warehouse functions down here um, help me set up those parameters if I'm doing a directed put away. Okay. All right. Um, cross the inventory item. Let's just talk about this. Um, we do have the ability to do multiple cross references. So if I've got item cross references, customer part cross references, all sorts of different things there. Um, item references is a little different um, um, versus cross references. So just depending on how we needed to do that. Multiple units of measure, we've already talked about item substitution is not a problem. Um, item availability, um, we do have the ability to look again based on items across location, but more specifically, we can look at item availability based on event period. So an event would be an outstanding incoming purchase order, sales order, production order, assembly order, right? There's a transaction or an event that occurs. A period would say, I want to look at it by day, week, month uh, availability. A variant is the ability to track an additional field on the item number. So most often I've used this for uh, revision tracking. So I've got Rev A, B, C, et cetera. Could be color, could be size, could be whatever. But then I can look based on location, bomb level, et cetera. So uh, lots of uh, visibility to item availability if I need to. I'm just going to drop over here to show you the structure. So this is a, I think this is a multi-level bill. Yeah, so this is a multi-level bill of material that I'm making. So you can see, um, you know, a visual structure of this item, including um, including my my uh, uh, routing that's been incorporated into my um, my structure of the item. So just showing you multi-level bill of material. This again is manufacturing, but um, just some visibility into how that could look. My uh, bomb structure. It's just a purchase item, and that's really not uh, not super relevant. 